Say what up. Let me know when you yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get it. So, let's get it. Touchdowns, field goals, dunks, and 30-point blowouts. It's been a great week for sports and an incredible week for our very own Huskies. Welcome back, fans. First things first, I would like to congratulate the UConn women's field hockey team for advancing to their record 15th and 5th straight Final Four. They made five straight Final Fours. What? And also, this week, Huskies basketball has returned. The men and women are back in business with the men defeating Colgate and the women destroying Stanford. I'm joined by returning Wiz, Chinadu Amanu. And Stores Nation vet, Brandon Carney. Fellas, hey starting with the men. <laughs> what is your reaction so far? Uh, what, what do you see? Honestly, I'm just able. I'm just glad they were able to start this season off with a W. I mean, I wasn't really expecting much, though. This is a game they should have won. Um, Colgate isn't really a good basketball team, so I'm not surprised by the outcome. I will say this, though. I love the way Terry Larrier played. Ball. 27 points on Ball. 11 of 18 Ball. shooting. Yep. He missed a lot of time last year with his injury, yep. and and then also he had to sit out the year before because he transfers, but he showed no signs of rust on Friday. Um, I said this going into the season that there's, the team's success is going to depend on Altree Gilbert, Jalen Adams, and Terry Larrier. So yep. it'll be interest, interesting to see how this season plays out and how they build off this victory. And Brandon, what did, you, what did you see in the game? Yeah, no, I'm definitely with you, Chen. This is a game they should win. But so was last year's opener against Wagner, and they didn't. So you can't really say anything's a given with this UConn team. Got to take a win. I, exactly. Uh, it wasn't the most convincing victory, but let's not forget this was a game without Jalen Adams. All Tariq Gilbert didn't shoot very well. Uh, I'm excited to see what these guys can do with a full-strength lineup. And if that's the Terry Larry we're going to see all season long, I can't wait to see him like uh, what him and Jalen are going to do, two NBA prospects, two guys who are going to light it up this year. And then with the woman, absolutely destroying Stanford, Brandon, you know, what what you pick up from there? What you see? How about Crystal Dangerfield? Oh, Tw well, 20, oh, 24 <laughs> points, 6 of 7 from 3. She looked so tentative last year. Yep. She was coming off the bench for a lot of the season. But if she becomes a second coming of Mariah Jefferson in terms of impact, second which is what a lot of people kind of thought she was going to be when she first got here, and she looked a little soft, she seems yep. to have gotten better, but this team's going to be an entirely different level of unfair. Yep. All five starters and two bench players, Azure Stevens and Mega, Megan Walker, are capable of dropping 20-plus on any given night. How do you stop that? You can't stop I know it's nothing new for the UConn women if they were to do this, but I wouldn't be surprised if they don't lose a game this year. Chin. Yeah, I'm going to have to agree with Brandon. <laughs> Honestly, this team is great. I thought it would be a somewhat close game, you know, because Stanford is ranked 10th in the nation, but honestly... Once again, UConn shows their dominance over women's basketball. They played outstanding basketball on both offense and defense, scoring 24 points off turnovers in the first half. Honestly, Crystal Dangerfield, she's a bucket, and I love that she's <laughs> in the starting lineup this year. Honestly, these Huskies can throw 10 at you at 10 bodies at you any given night, so this team is scary, and honestly, they look unbeatable at this point. So. And Stanford's a top, what, top five team? They're top, like, 10. What? top 10. Top 10. So, yeah. like, like where, where's the competition yeah, coming from? Like, the, I thought it would Stanford's be a the team no that, air. Stanford yeah. is the team that, you know, gives us that trouble. Usually. And they ruined their streak. Yep. That one, that yeah, one UConn's one. just yep. a lot deeper this year. They were running out, like, six-man rotation last year. Now, like you said, they got, like, ten people they can yep, put out there absolutely. and produce. Yep. It's crazy. Yeah. Yep. It's going to be a great year. Absolutely. It's going to be a great year. And when we come back, we're going to play our favorite hashtag wars. The conflict is here. The conflict is here. We found it. Fight, man. I'm about to say conflict. Fellas, I have Trash. no idea where it is. This is just a terrible paperwork thing. Five years of terrible football, a terrible trophy, and a fish cake. I'm sorry, Coach. I love you. <laughs> no, you don't. What's a hashtag you would give this awful rivalry, Has? Shaking my head. You want to hear why I'm shaking my head? The past four games between this rivalry trace about when Bob Diaco first started coaching. You want the stats? I got you, bro. In 2014, UConn beat UCF 37-29. to 2015, UConn 40 UCF, 13. Oh. Now, 2016, UConn, 16, UCF, 24. This past weekend, UConn, 24, UCF, 49. And the trophy was, may I say, left on the bench. Oh and my no one gosh, found left it. Left the bench. Joe. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I don't understand how you can start a rivalry, have a trophy, 
but only coached at your school for three years. Mm. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Shake my head. I'm done. Brandon, what, what's yours? I'm going with hashtag why. And that's going to be tough to get trending because we're not going to all be on the same page with the number of whys, but that's fine. Uh, Diaco, <laughs> I get the whole trying to create a rivalry thing. You kind of want one. But his legacy at UConn is not going to be his bowl appearance now. It's not going to be his scoring drought, which, I mean, it might be kind of that. But it won't even be his salmon pants. It's going to be his invention of a fake rivalry yep. that made UConn football look ridiculous. <laughs> UConn could have stomped UCF on Saturday yep. with their backup quarterback, even if they did and they crushed any long shot playoff hopes UCF had, they're still the team that created the fake rivalry with the, e with the extravagant trophy that was left on the bench in the rain. UConn football is gonna still look insane and that's what Diaco left us with. Diaco, why did you do that to us and then flee to Nebraska? Why? <laughs> he was fired, by the way. What, yeah, he but he, he fled, look where he went. He went to the Midwest. Nebraska. Of course he did. Had He's to get getting away. paid to coach defense at Nebraska. That, that's the best life. What are they doing? Oh, uh, they just gave up like a million yards to, to Minnesota. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not looking Minnesota good. Minnesota ain't good. It's not looking good. Um, um, oh, my fault. I was doing my best Ben McAdoo. Ben McAdoo, what are you doing, coach? Did you just say that in half time? Um. Has, what is your reaction to this? To this great, inspiring halftime speech. Great, inspiring indeed. <laughs> Hashtag hit the showers. This team is struggling for real. For Ben McAdoo to defer from the conversation of him being in the hot seat, he directs the blame to Phil's study. He said that doesn't have anything to do with anything. Hmm. When asked about the situation with the team, he said, what situation? We have to go correct the tape. Jeez. We have to get ready for the next ball game. Well, <laughs> sir, you have to get ready for the off season. They were ranked 29th defensively and 27th offensively. <laughs> they have only 2,768 yards, but they allow more yards than they score with 3,603. There's talk in the locker room that two unanimous players have said that McAdoo has lost their team. A change needs to happen. Either he gets fired or we see Eli Manning stepping in his brother's footsteps and leaving too. Oh, boy. Brandon, what do you see? Man, what, what's going on with him? Man, I don't even like Eli, but if he's out before McAdoo is, there's a huge problem. Bro. Hashtag, <laughs> hashtag bring your playbook. If you've ever seen Hard Knocks, you know that asking a player to bring his playbook means he's getting cut. Kick, oh, I, it, oh, probably, ah. it probably don't Kick work up. the same for coaches. <laughs> bring your mustache, bring your stupid <laughs> shirt, whatever you're going to do. Uh, but if Ben McAdoo is still employed by the time this show is aired and put on YouTube, I'll be shocked. I'll be shocked. <laughs> the Giants are 1-8. and eight. They just lost to the C.J. Bethard-led 49ers. 49ers. C.J. Bethard wasn't even good at Iowa. He was like Alex Smith, but way worse. And I'm not even talking this year's Alex Smith. Like the game manager. Yeah, yep, the game yep, yep, manager yep, yep. version. But the most egregious thing he did, like you mentioned, was he didn't answer a reporter's question. It was so simple. All it was was, what did you say to your team at halftime? <laughs> he looked blank, Nothing. looked blank into the audience. And then acted like the question was never asked. You Next can't just ignore you. that. Like, what did you say? Did you actually say nothing? Or did you just say something that you couldn't say to the public? Either way, you've got to say something to answer that question. Ben, if you're that clueless, you're going to be hitting the unemployment line very soon. Enjoy the CFL. <laughs> At best, you might be coaching Little League. I don't, baseball. I'll probably should That's get into another sport, to be honest. Right? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Right. Ben McAdoo is probably hitting the showers. And we'll be taking a short break, and we'll be coming back with the hottest takes. Stay tuned. Welcome back. We're back to discuss hot takes. And you know what? I'm, why, what better way to start it than with the hottest take of them all? Devin Booker's the best shooting guard in the league. Talk to me about it. Say, I want to hear somebody say something crazy. No. Because Devin Booker's the best shooting guard in the league. No, he's not. We still he's got 20 DeMar DeRozan. DeRozan. Who? So. DeMar, DeMar, DeMar DeFrozen. DeMar DeRozan. DeMar DeFrozen. Because he's frozen in a playoff. That's because Devin Booker scores 70 on the Se Celtics. 70. Oh, 70. He's no, 19. 70. He was so? 19. What does that mean? When's Devin Booker going to hit the playoffs? You're... Never. You're, you're getting it to DeMar DeRozan. We're getting there. Okay, he's 19. Chill. He's supposed to carry a franchise? So the team... We'll make it to the playoffs. That's, what you, that's your hot take, too? I didn't say I, – I, I don't know, okay? I don't know if the Suns are making the playoffs know. this year, okay? But I know. I Devin Booker so. is the best <laughs> shooting guard in the league, okay? No, there's no way. We still got Bradley – so he's better than Bradley Beal. He's better than Bradley – why not? And C.J. McCollum? Why is he not better? Oh, okay, he's better than C.J. McCollum, too. All I'm saying is this is at the very best a time-sensitive hot take because as soon as Chris Paul comes back and Harden moves back over to shooting guard, Booker that is, is true. gone. That is gone. true. Harden – Harden – stop it. Devin Harden. Booker. Devin Booker. 
Devin Booker. No. Dude. Devin Clay Booker. Thompson. Uh, Devin Booker better than Clay, I mean, too. He, Clay he Thompson, like I said, too. looks like the CBS well. logo and can only shoot. Jesus. Booker. Not worried about Clay. Young, 19. Don't worry about He's a baby. He's a baby. Um, all right, Hez, what you got? Jeez, everybody want to come at me. What you got? I want to hear your hot take. My hot take? Milwaukee Bucks going to the Eastern Conference Finals. That's it. I said it. I'm sorry. This team sits at, I think, six in the Eastern Conference. For a team with the 2017-18 MVP, I'm saying that, too. That's my hot take. They have a great supporting cast. They just acquired Eric Bledsoe in a trade for Greg Monroe and two future draft picks. Eric Bledsoe is a great on-ball defender who can get you a bucket whenever needed. Coming off a career high last season of 21.1 points per game and 6.3 assists per game, I'm looking for him to demolish those stats in every category and let everything go up. Let's not forget, the Bucks still have last year's Rookie of the Year, Malcolm Brogdon, and Jabari Parker coming back from his knee injury. Look for that team to give a Cavs a run for their De Niro. Oh, boy. Oh boy, and and Brandon, uh, what is your hot take? Cause uh, I don't even. I mean, is that even a hot take? That's a hot the take. Bucks, Giannis, that's sizzling. Giannis, Giannis MVP isn't a hot take. Bucks making the Eastern Conference Finals. I mean, who's it's, go, it's mildly it's hot. Who's good it's in the Eastern Conference? It's boiling. Got, I'll, I'll allow it. They got Boston, the Cavs, and I mean the Washington the Post. Boston, they, they phone I'm them. not in the hype of Boston either. All right, but Brandon, Brandon, what's yours? All right, you want a hot take along the same lines? How's this? The Denver Nuggets are going to make the Western Conference Finals. You must be a Nuggets fan. And go up <laughs> against the Golden State Warriors. Now, yes, I <laughs> might be a Nuggets fan. Right. But don't look now. You, with your Bucks in sixth in the East, Nuggets are third in the West. The stacked, what does that mean? It's the stacked early. West. The stacked West. Yeah, it's early, and they struggled early on. Now they're getting it together. Rough start to the season. Offense is finally clicking now that their biggest off-fit, off-season acquisition maybe ever. Paul Millsap is getting comfortable. Paul Millsap. The Nuggets have the second most imposing front court duo in the league behind the Pelicans, who have Cousins and Davis. Not going to challenge them. Yeah, no, but it's no definitely Millsap. second behind them. Now, Jamal Murray. <laughs> it's hot up here. You got Jamal <laughs> Murray, bugging. who's in a zone, playing off the ball. Dropped 32 the other night against Orlando. Jamal, night, it's about time night, he does something. It's about time. Night. Gary Harris continuing to impress, and even Emmanuel Moutier, who was thought to be heading toward bus territory, is having the best year of his career. He's finally shooting is over he, 40% from... Finally? No, not yet. No, not yet. Shooting no. over 40% from the field, actually over 50% from three, which he... All right, that's surprising. He had, that's he had, crazy. A, he had a broken shot. Three? He was like, before Lonzo, he was the original broken shot, dude. Oh, so I don't really know. And so, yeah, I'm saying this team is going to finish second in the West. They're going to finish the second. Season. Over the Spurs? Yes. Yeah, over the Rockets. Because, Why is that even because, back yet? Over the Rockets? They have the, they have the deepest roster in the, the West world. other than the Warriors. The deepest roster. Their bench, guys that can score all the time. Will Barton dropped 30-something the other night, too. Barton. Will Barton, he got for absolute scraps from the Blazers. So I wonder why. <laughs> he dropped 30. <laughs> what do you want That's from one game. game. He's a scoring threat. Gee. Their roster is super deep, and yeah, they're going to the Western Conference Finals. I'm telling you. Watch, over here. Watch man. Watch, man. Watch. Watch. It's, it's flaming over here. I almost had to take out the cold man. It's cold out. <laughs> Connecticut, right, November. It's like 30 no degrees. Joke. Degrees. Student, Gross. have a safe week, fam. Enjoy the break. Feel free to subscribe to UCTV and follow. We'll be back in two weeks. Happy Thanksgiving. Be easy.